The second topic, neurophysiology of the EEG. Before talk to the neurophysiology of the EEG, we have to understand the structure of neuron. A neuron include the dendrite, serial body, and axonal. The neuron passes the message from the dendrite to the cell body and to the axon. Then, through the synapse, pass the message to the other neuron. Let's see the detail. At the initial, a neuron is in the resting potential. When an exciting signal into the neuron, the sodium ion moves into the cell. An action potential appears now. This stage we call depolarization. Then, potassium ion moves out to the cell. This stage we call the repolarization stage. After the balance of the ion flow, the neural cell will back to the resting potential. Now, let's talk about how the neuron passes the message. When the first neuron wants to transfer the message to the other neuron, the electro signal passes through the axon to the synapse. And at the synapse, the potential change will let the presynapse release some neuron transmitter, maybe exciting neuron transmitter such as glutamate or inhibition neuron transmitter such as GABA. Those transmitter will co combine to the postsynapse receptor and induce the new electrical potential change. Then the postsynapse neuron will pass electrical signal through the axon to the other. Our electro Record the loss potential change from the brain. The potential, the potential change direct, and the electro sitting area will affect the EEG shape and amplitude. For example, if our electro is prepenetrated to the signal, we can cut the Mesma amplitude of the EEG. If we put the electro on <clears throat> the offset of two electro field, <clears throat> we may cut the flat stride line on the EEG. When we compare to the two electro <clears throat> potential, the different reference we chose will affect our EEG appearance. The electro include the two input, the input one and input two. The final EEG signal we saw in the EEG monitor is the different part of the input one and input two. Thus, we can got the positive potential and negative potential, and we definite positive potential as the downward wave and the negative potential is upward wave. Through those waves, we can understand the electro field of the EEG. For example, we can see the left side picture first. The potential of FP1, F3, P3, O1 is zero. So the EEG line is flat stride line. And the C3 potential is negative 50. So we got an upward wave. Then let's see the right side picture. The FP1, O1 potential is zero. So we got the flat stride line on the EEG. And the F3, P3, the potential is negative 30, so we got the upward wave. And the 3, 3 potential is negative 50, we also got 
the upward wave, but the MP2 is more higher than F3 and P3 due to its more negative potential. Let us see those two pictures. In the right picture, the line of the EEG is one electrical signal. And in the left picture, the EEG line means two electrical different potential. For example, the top line of this one, the input one is FP1 and input two is F3. So the different potential is 0 minus negative 30. So we got the positive 30 potential. The positive 30 potential therefore transferred to the downward wave. And we look to the second line. The input one is F3 and input two is C3. The difference of those potential is negative 30 to minus the negative 50. We got the positive 20. So we also we also got the downward wave. The positive 30 amplitude is larger than positive 20 wave. And the third line. The input one is C3 and the input two is P3. So the differential between those two electrodes is negative 50 minus negative 30. And the last line, the input 1 is P3 and input 2 is O2, O1. So as negative 30 to minus 0, we got negative 30 and negative 20. So we got two lines upward going. So in this picture, we can see the phase reversal here. It means the reversal of the potential area. By this principle, we can use to understand the epilepsy wave and try to find the epilepsy genetic zone. When the focal seizure attack, it propagation then generalized to whole brain, we can use the EEG change in the time and spatial propagation to understand the epilepsy attack.